What's up everyone? Welcome to part six of our YOLO tutorial series. And in this one, I'm going to show you how we can annotate our images. So what you see here, I'm plotting each image in matplotlib and I have this rectangular selector. So I'm using this to draw a bounding box around the fidget spinner in the image. Then I just click a button and it's going to save a XML file, which is our annotation file. So I just go image by image, drawing bounding boxes, click a button and you can see I'm generating these XML files. So these are our annotation files and what they contain is the image name, the height and width, and most importantly, the bounding boxes that I draw. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to display the images, how to get that rectangle selector, how to link callbacks so that once we're done with the image, we can take our mouse clicks and create a function to create this uh, annotation file. So in this video, we've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. So to see how annotations work, let's first take a look at a VOC folder example. So here I've got VOC 2007, and if I open it up, you see I've got JPEG images and annotations. So JPEG images are all the images that we're gonna train with, and for each image, there's actually a annotation file. So let's take a look at this thing. So it's an XML file and the main tag is annotation. And we've got a bunch of information like the folder name, the image name, the source, the owner, and we're gonna ignore the source and owner for our stuff, but we've also got size, so height, width, depth, segmented, and then we have the object information. So we've got the name or the class of the object, the type of pose, if it's truncated, if it's difficult or not, and then the bounding box, which specifies where the object is in the image. So for each image, we need to generate this file. So the way we're gonna do this is, first we're going to display the image, and I'm gonna show you how to create that rectangular selector. And then we're gonna create a callback. So we're going to call back or create a function that returns the mouse click. So we're gonna click in the top left, bottom right, take those coordinates, and then we're gonna write a function that's gonna take those values and generate the XML file for us. So like I said, we've got a lot to cover, so let's jump into the code. So fair warning, we're gonna be going through this code kind of fast, but like always, I'm gonna post the code to my GitHub, and you can always contact me through the comments below or through Facebook if you've got any problems. So I've already created a new Python file in our new model data folder, and let's begin with the imports. So we're gonna import OS, we're gonna import matplotlib.pyplot.splt, we're gonna import CV2, and so these are nothing new, but we're also gonna import from matplotlib.widgets, we're gonna be importing rectangle selector. So this is gonna allow us to draw that draggable rectangle on our images and then get the coordinates from it. Next, we're gonna create some global variables. And I know we haven't talked about global variables before, but we'll see how these work in a second. So we're gonna create something called IMG. We're just gonna initialize it to none. Then we're gonna create something called TL list and BR list. And these are gonna store the coordinates of our mouse clicks. So the top left and bottom right mouse clicks. Next one's gonna be something called object list and it's gonna store all the objects in the image and for us, all the objects are always gonna be fidget spinners. All right, so next we're gonna define some normal constants. So the first one's gonna be image folder and if you saw the previous video, we saw that we saved all our images to a folder called images. Then we're gonna create a save directory or save dir we're gonna call that annotation. So this is the folder that's gonna store all those annotation files. Next, we're gonna define our object, and for us, it's always gonna be fidget spinner. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is jump down to our if name equals, equals main part. And we're gonna start just by looping over our images and plotting them, just to get that set up. So we're gonna do a for loop. So for n comma image file in enumerate, and we're going to enumerate os.scander, and our images are stored in the image folder, 
So Scander, we're going to use that to return all the objects in the image folder. So we'll see how this works in a second, but next what we're going to do is we're going to store the image file as img just so we can have it later as a global variable. So image is going to be equal to image file. Next we're going to create our figure axes. So fig comma ax is going to be equal to plt dot subplots and we're just going to create one. And the next thing, the next two lines, you can ignore these. I'm just using them to control where the image is displayed on my screen. Um, just because I'm using just a smaller section of my screen. And so yeah, you can ignore these two lines, but they're just putting it at a X and Y coordinates and just specifying the height and width of the figure. All right, moving on, we're gonna create our image. This is gonna be equal to CV2 dot M read and we're going to read the image file but we're gonna read the path so this will give us the full path to the image next we're going to convert the color because CV2 and matplotlib work in different color spaces CV2 when you read it by default it's gonna be BGR but matplotlib wants RGB so it's gonna look weird unless we convert it so we're gonna do CV2 dot convert color and we're going to convert the color of the image and the way we're going to convert it is cv2 dot color bgr to rgb all right so the next thing we're going to do is ax dot m show we're just going to display the image and then finally we'll do plt dot show so now when we run this you can see we get an image as soon as we close it out, we get the next image and it's just gonna keep going image by image. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of that. And now let's look at how we set up callbacks. So to set up our callback, what we're gonna do is create a new function. So I'm gonna call this thing line select callback. And what I'm gonna do is just take in an event. So I'm gonna call it click and it's gonna be our mouse click event. And then all I'm going to do right now is just print click dot X data and click dot Y data. And what this should do is every time I click the mouse, it should print the pixel location that I clicked in the figure. So now in order to link this to our plot, what I'm going to do is come down after we display it, but before we show it, I'm going to call PLT dot connect. And what I'm going to connect is a button press event. And what I'm going to connect that event to, well, I'm going to connect it to the line select callback. So now when I run this, you can see here, I'll just move this out of the way. Every time I click, we're getting, we're getting the coordinates. So if I go up here, you can see we're kind of up at zero, zero. And yeah, so that's how we can create callbacks to link our mouse click to print out something from it. So that's the basics. And now what we're going to do is expand on this to add the rectangle selector and finally link it to a function that's going to create the XML file. So now I'm going to start by modifying this function a bit. So I'm going to also add release and then I'm going to call global and I'm gonna call TL list. This will allow us to modify TL list. And we're also gonna do the same for BR list. And what we're going to do is append some data to these lists. So we're gonna call TL list dot append. And what we're gonna append is an integer. Well, actually it's gonna be a tuple and it's gonna be an integer version of CLK dot X data. Then we're also going to add an integer version of clk.ydata. So this is going to be the top left corner. So when we click the mouse, we always have to click on the top left corner. So that's just something to be aware of. So we're going to basically do the same thing with the BR list. So I'm just going to change this to BR list. This is going to be RLS and this will also be RLS. So now we're gonna be appending these coordinates that we click to our, yeah, we're just gonna be appending them to the list. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we need to link that rectangle to this thing. So this part might be a little bit tricky, but let's just go through it and um, show you how it works. So right after we do I am show, we're going to create something called toggle selector dot rs. And what this is going to be equal to is our rectangle selector and then we're going to pass a bunch of stuff in here so we're going to pass the axes that we're going to link it to we're going to pass the function we're going to link it to then we're going to specify the draw type and it's going to be box we're also going to use blit and it's going to be true next we're going to specify the button so the button is going to be one so one means left mouse click. We could also specify like the right mouse click or even that center scroll wheel click, but everything's gonna be linked to the left mouse click. Then we're gonna do min span x. We're gonna set that equal to five. Min span y equal to five. Don't ask me why. I'm, I got this from the matplotlib site and these were the values they recommended and it seems to work. So then we're gonna do span chords, and that's gonna be equal to pixels. Next, we're going to set interactive equal to true. So this is how we set up the callback for that rectangle selector, but we also need to now activate it. And the way we activate it is with another function. So we're gonna to have to come up here we're going to call def and the function that we're going to create is called oops, toggle selector and what we're going to pass is an event so this is going to be another event like a mouse click and what we're going to do is call toggle selector dot rs dot set set active and that's going to be true so this basically just activates the toggle selector so it's a little weird it's kind of like recursively defined but trust me it works we'll see this in action all right so the next thing we need to do is redefine um, some stuff down here so here we created this connection but what i'm going to do is change it i'm going to call it bbox we're going to set it equal to plt.connect and instead of button it's going to be key press event and instead we're gonna set it equal to the toggle selector. So finally, let's go ahead and run this. We should see the rectangle selector show up. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it. And if we click and draw, you can see we're getting that rectangle selector and we're appending stuff to our list. But now what we wanna do is we wanna create another callback. So when we hit the Q button, it's going to take that stuff that we've been appending and call another function to write it to the XML annotation file and then clear out the list and display the next plot. So now I'm going to show you how to do that extra callback. So to create a new callback, we're going to need a new function. So I'm going to come down here and we're going to call this function on key, oops, on key press. And again, we're gonna pass in an event. This time it's gonna be, we're gonna specify when we click the, the letter Q, it's gonna do all that stuff I said. So we're gonna need to global a few things. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that stuff here. So object list, TL list, BR list, and also the image. We're gonna global these because we need to affect them. Then if the event.key is equal to Q. So if we hit the Q key, what we're going to do is for now, let's just print TL list, um, BR list, and yeah, let's just print those for now. Then what we want to do is clear the list. So TL list, we're going to set it equal to an empty list. BR list, we're also going to set that to an empty list. The object list, we haven't done anything to it, so for now we'll leave it as is. The image, we're gonna set that equal to none again. 
And finally, we're going to call plt.close. So now let's go ahead and run this. So once we've drawn a bunch of selectors, when we hit Q, we should see everything print out and the image should close and we should get the new one popping up. So fingers crossed this works. Let's draw one box. Let's draw two boxes and let's draw three boxes. Hit Q. Oh shoot, we forgot to connect the callback, my bad. So let's come back down here. So we need to connect the callback to our box so, or to our figure. So I'm gonna call this one key. And the way it's gonna work is basically the same as the other one, plt.connect. We're going to be connecting a key press, key press event. And the function we called it was on key press. So let's come down here on key press. Now let's run this one. So we draw a box, we draw another box, we draw another box, hit Q, and you can see it prints out everything here. So we've got three coordinates, three top left coordinates, three bottom right coordinates. And we can do the same here. So let's just draw a few boxes, hit Q, and it repeats. So we get the next image and we get all our coordinates. So finally, the last thing I forgot to do was append stuff to the object list. So where I do that, I forgot to do that right here um, on this one. So we're also going to do object list and we're going to append the object because we only have one object we're looking for. So just every time we draw a box, just put fidget spinner into the list. So that's what we do here. Then we also need to clear out the, the object list. So we'll set it to an empty list. And now we're good. So basically we've got our thing working the way we want it to. Every time we draw, we can just draw boxes, hit Q, and it's gonna output all the information we need. So now what we need to do is instead of print out this stuff, what we want to do is write a function that says generate an, an XML annotation file. So that's what we're going to do next. And in order to keep this video kind of short, what I'm going to do is stop the video here and we'll look at how to create that annotation file in the next video. It's quite a bit of stuff and I don't want to make this video go like over a half hour. So like always, the code will be posted to my GitHub and you can always ask me questions, chat with me in the comments below or use the Facebook group. I know we went through it quick, but yeah, we'll, we'll work through this together. And yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.